One of the common questions that we get from our patients is, why do I have good days or bad days, or why do I sometimes have flare-ups in my symptoms? So everybody has a certain level of capacity, how much we can tolerate during the day before symptoms can kick in. If you've had a brain injury, or even a neurodevelopmental challenge, or degeneration in your brain function, we have a certain level of capacity. And if you have some of these challenges that I mentioned, your capacity may drop. It's almost like a gas tank. And one of the simple ways I like to explain that is, everything comes at a cost. So if you're given 100 points to get through the day, what do doing simple things cost you? Your ability to sense where you are in the world. Where's, where's the world around you? For the typical person without a concussion, without a brain injury, without a, a something that you may be going through, it costs them 10 points to get through that process. It may cost you 20. So by the end of the day, you're spent. You've gone over your limit. So now you have symptoms. You need to go lie down in a dark room. You can't go to your kids' sporting events. You can't live life. And that's what we like to do is say, based on you, what do we need to work on so you can start allocating your points appropriately and get through the day? Ordinarily, what happens is that the brain senses that there's dysfunction in a certain area, let's say the brainstem or the cerebellum, and the brain is able to compensate for that by allowing higher level types of uh, function, like the frontal lobe or the parietal lobe, to now take on some of the responsibility of some of those other parts of the uh, regions of the brain that are not working appropriately anymore. Oftentimes that can be the result of uh, maybe poor sleep. Uh, we may be lying in bed for the same uh, number of hours, but the quality of our sleep is not um, uh, as, as good as it was. And, um, so we don't regenerate as much neurotransmitters during our sleep as we normally would when we have good quality sleep. Uh, dietary changes can also affect this, uh, even stress. Sometimes I have patients that have a really good day followed by a flare-up day. And to those patients, I ask them to document what do you do on your days, and not just your bad days, but your good days too, and see if we can find a pattern are you doing too much on your good days and then paying for it the next day? That's why we tend to recommend a daily adjustable program for their exercises to start incorporating different tasks of daily living. And then once your brain is able to rest and recuperate and rebuild the neurotransmitter it needs and redevelop that energy, you might have a good day. So now you can understand why you have good days and bad days after hitting your head.